all going to speak for yourself from the crib. Presented by Hyundai, Marcellus Wiley. We'll tell you if Lamar Jackson has a real shot to repeat as MVP. But right now, I'm joined by LeVar Arrington, a Fox football, college football analyst, Reggie Bush. Today, What's going on? we're going to start with one of Reggie's and my teammate, Drew Brees, who was mm-hmm. buried in an avalanche of criticism from around the sports world yesterday after some comments about the possible return of kneeling during the national anthem in the NFL this year. Here's what Breeze had to say that had everyone so upset. I will never agree with anybody um, disrespecting the flag of the United States of America or our country. Um, let me let me just tell you what I see or what I feel when the national anthem is played and when I look at the, the flag of the United States. I envision my two grandfathers who fought for this country during World War II. So every time I stand with my hand over my heart, looking at that flag and singing the national anthem, that's what I think about. And in many cases, it brings me to tears, thinking about all that has been sacrificed, not just those in the military, but for that matter, those throughout the civil rights movements of the 60s and everyone and all that has been endured by so many people up until this point. And is everything right with our country right now? No, it's not. We still have a long way to go. But I think what you do by standing there and showing respect to the flag with your hand over your heart is it shows unity. It shows that we are all in this together. We can all do better. And that we are all part of the solution. It didn't take long for Breeze to walk back his comments, writing, quote, I would like to apologize to my friends, teammates, the city of New Orleans, the black community, NFL community, anyone I heard with my comments yesterday. And speaking with some of you, it breaks my heart to know the pain I have caused. In an attempt to talk about respect, unity, and solidarity centered around the American flag and the national anthem, I made comments that were insensitive and completely missed the mark on the issues we are facing right now as a country. They lacked awareness and any type of compassion or empathy. Instead, those words have become divisive and hurtful and have misled people into believing that somehow I am an enemy. I am sick about the way my comments were perceived yesterday, but I take full responsibility and accountability. Reggie, what's your reaction to Breeze's comments? Um, I was frustrated. Uh, I was frustrated that he still didn't get it and um, that he made it about the flag because it was never about the flag. Uh, From day one, when Colin Kaepernick uh, took a knee, uh, a a peaceful knee, a peaceful protest, um, it was always about the injustice and the police brutality that continues to happen even to this day right now. Um, And, you know, me and my wife went out to protest because we wanted to know and see what the temperature was of the people and the climate and how they felt, because we wanted to know if they felt that same pain and that same anger and frustration that we felt, because I also have a responsibility uh, to raise my sons and daughters in this world. And I'm scared as hell when they get put over by a police officer. And I should not be scared of when my kids Mm. get put over by a police officer. And and so when we went out to these protests, what we saw were people of all colors, white, black, Asian, Spanish, all with their fists up, right? And so what that tells me is that everybody gets it. All colors, everybody in this world gets it. We've seen protests all around the world. And me and LeVar talked about this before the show started. That's what social media allows you to do. It allows you to see just how many people are on the same page. The whole entire United States and so many different countries in the world have all been marching and peacefully protesting for this. So how come you don't still get it? Because I know Drew Brees is a a man of high character. Um, I know he's a man of honor. I know he's a man of God. Um, I know he's a leader and I know his name carries weight. And so he knows better, not he should know better, he knows better, right? And so mm-hmm. what we, this is the predicament now that we're in because um, you know, there are a lot of people that are upset at the comments. And again, I understand the apology as well, uh, but this is something now that you know, Drew's gonna have to make right. Mm. You know, when I, I look at it, it's interesting you say what you say, Reg, because I, he doesn't get it. Like, he failed to connect 
what yeah. people, people, living things, li- living organisms are going through versus what the flag itself represents um, to him. So I felt like he was having a real moment. And sometimes yep. the things that can make you successful and and make you the high character person that you are are sometimes the things that can keep you away from sometimes understanding and comprehending simple things, right? So that laser sharp focus that Drew Brees has, the the discipline that he exercises as a quarterback and as as a, a person, I think came into play on his take of the flag. And he relies on what his experience has been. He relies on what he interprets as what's right versus wrong. And what he fails to understand is, is that the things, the power that he brings to the table ultimately gives him the, the ability to dictate what that is. Just like him saying, my personal experiences, this is how I see it. Using your, your grandfather and your family as examples of, of people that have fought in our military. And that's why he stands and puts his hand on his chest over his heart. And I get that, that that's his opinion and that's his take on it. But he's failing to see the bigger picture and connecting the pain and the frustration and the anger that a group of people are feeling because, you know, for what it's worth, my father lost a foot and a leg. He has no feet. I'll never Mm. run one day with my daddy because he fought Mm. in the Vietnam War for some of these truths and these freedoms that we're talking about. I feel what my kind, my people are feeling in these moments. I'm not going to be I'm not going to be ignorant to what other people are feeling. But let's just be clear for one second. Other people have fought in this war that are going through the same thing that the people are protesting about. So what Drew did was disconnect himself from the realities of what everybody that represents that flag represent. And I think that that was the tremendous miss here. It really was. Uh, Drew tried to take cover under the cloth of the flag and avoid a greater conversation of race. And that was a gross misstep. This is a Drew Brees who I've known for 20 years, day one in the NFL. Uh, I can vouch for Drew Brees' character in terms of being a guy that understands the complexities of this world. Uh, Drew Brees is more than a tremendous quarterback. He's been a tremendous citizen everywhere he's been. Uh, His works in terms of his Katrina efforts, his works in terms of his $5 million donated to COVID. I could end this show still talking about Drew Brees' efforts in terms of giving to others, especially those who don't look like Drew Brees. But Drew did step in it in this situation. And I think he stepped in it and he stepped in it knowing that he was doing that. He owned his own steps. It's crazy to Mm. see that when we're having this ceremonial moment, when everyone's eyes are pierced on the flag and everyone's ears are open to the lyrics of the anthem, that we're really seeing a conflict of interest. We're really seeing a battle between idealism and realism. And what happens in moments like this is that you start to hear and discern different information based on your experiences. So you can love the ceremony if you're a Drew Brees. You can love what the ideals are being promoted in the anthem. But black people look at it from a whole different perspective of realism Mm -hmm. and saying that those ideals have not been lived up to, that those ideals sound fantasy instead of real. And what's happening right now in our minds, in our interactions, on social media, this conflict is really just a war zone of the ideals that were promoted and the real that we are living through. LeVar, Mm -hmm. listening to Drew Brees talk through this, and then you hear, and then you know, and it's this complete mix of emotions. Where does that put you? Yeah, I mean, it it just... It opens your eyes, just like you want people to have their eyes open to what black people are going through, right? I I said today, I posted this, that 
if you if we're saying all lives matter, it's like a puzzle. When you put together a puzzle and you're putting in all these pieces of lives that matter, we can't say all lives matter and look at the puzzle and and feel good about it until it's complete or else you're distracted by seeing the pieces that are missing in that <clears throat> puzzle that create the picture. So for me, my reaction is let's just keep putting the pieces into the puzzle because that is the best way to approach this because the realities that, that Drew Brees spoke of are a lot of the realities that other people share. He only apologized because of the backlash and the outrage. Be clear on that. He spoke his <laughs> truth Hello. and a lot of people agree mm. with that truth and agree with mm. that truth. So I think you don't have to agree with what we're feeling as a people. You don't have to know what we're going through, but put the piece in the puzzle. Because if you put yeah. the piece in the puzzle, we can continue the conversation on an even plane, even if we don't fully understand what our backgrounds say our true realities are. Well, I think, Marcel, I thought you made a great point because, um, you know, with, black people don't feel that same sense of pride when we look at that flag uh, as maybe some of our, our white uh, fellow Americans do. Because we know, like Drew Brees talked about, his, his grandparents that fought in that same war uh, when our grandparents and our ancestors came home, they were still shot in the back. Uh, they were still, um, um, you know, treated uh, like less vote. than human. Tried, yeah, unable to vote. Um, we, we still were enslaved when we came home from those wars. And we're still seeing effects of that even now in 2020. And, and so this is how powerful this movement is, because the same thing that Colin Kaepernick protested for, taking a knee, right? Now we're seeing police officers take a knee in a sign of solidarity to people. We're seeing police chiefs and, and, and police officers march with people because they also understand that, hey, you are us, we are you. you those are our next door neighbors, right? And I know some of those police oh. officers feel the pain that we feel. And that's why we're seeing um, so many officers, you know, showing up. And, and look at, I mean, look at these images, man. This is powerful stuff that's happening right now and it's happening all over the world. And there is absolutely no excuse to not, to not get this right now. Yeah, I, I think what was a, a little disturbing for those who intimately know Drew Brees, like myself, like you, Reggie, and I'm sure LeVar, your encounters as well, is that it's 2020 and we're not letting you hide in plain sight anymore. Like, people were calling everything out. And it's crazy yeah. because this is Drew Brees that I went to his wedding. Like, Drew Brees, there were moments, a young Drew Brees. I'm talking about day one Drew Brees. I called him out. I wanted him benched. I wanted Doug Flutie to be our quarterback in San Diego. And mm. Drew Brees showed me in that moment he had more character than I did the next day. After all the firestorm and, and all of the criticism, the avalanche just dropping on Drew Brees' head, he walked right up to me in that locker room, looked me dead in the eye, emotions all on his sleeve. I mean, literally looking like he's tearing and he's talking to me, not in spite and not to hold a grudge. He really mm -hmm. wanted to talk through that conversation, and we did. And here I am in my fifth, sixth year thinking I'm the man, and I'm getting taught a lesson in character from a rookie. That's the Drew Brees I know. And that's the Drew Brees that I hope comes out of this situation and start to show and reveal more of the great character that his works have shown and this misstep did not show. So look forward to that day. Coming up, we'll have more on Drew Brees. And then we'll tell you if his critics, which include Aaron Rodgers, actually went overboard yesterday. Speak for Yourself is presented by Hyundai. Welcome back to Speak for Yourself from the crib. Marcel Swally, joined by LeVar Arrington and Reggie Bush. Let's return to Drew Brees, who faced a barrage of criticism yesterday after saying he believes kneeling during the national anthem disrespects the flag. The criticism came from all sides, including teammate and players coalition leader, Malcolm Jenkins. If you don't understand that other people experience something totally different than you. Then when you talk about being the brotherhood and all this other it's just lip service or it's only on the field. 
Because when we step off of this field and I take my helmet off and I'm a black man walking around America and I'm telling you I'm dealing with these things, I'm telling you my communities are dealing with these things, and your response to me is, don't talk about that here. This is not the place. Where is the place, Drew? A rival quarterback got in on the action as well with Aaron Rodgers posting on Instagram. A few years ago, we were criticized for locking arms in solidarity before the game. It has never been about an anthem or a flag. Not then, not now. Listen with an open heart. Let's educate ourselves and then turn word and thought into action. Reggie, are you bothered by all the criticism Breeze has taken? Am I bothered by it? Um, I'm not bothered by it because uh, to whom much is given, much is required. And nobody understands that more than Drew Brees himself. Because, again, as we talked about before in this show, this is a man of high character. This is a man of honor. This is somebody I look up to. This is somebody I speak highly about. When I go to talk to other football teams, I talk, one of the first people I talk about is Drew Brees. But with that said, no amount of money, no amount of black players that you play with, uh, no amount of black people that you may help um, or may know, no amount of times people call you to go and wear your jersey, it still will never, ever get you to feel and truly understand what it's like to live in America as a black man. And, and, and I think that the frustrating part was obviously is because Drew is a, per- he's a high IQ person. He's a very, very smart man. Very smart man. Somebody, again, like I said, I look up to. But again, um, it, it's, it's, uh, this is, it comes with the territory, man. And uh, it doesn't bother me at all. And I know Drew is a person um, who will take that criticism and who will digest it uh, the right way. That I do know. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to agree. I'm, I'm not bothered by all by the criticisms as, as well. Listen, nobody told Drew Brees to, to insert himself in the conversation if he wasn't prepared to do it in a responsible and a correct way, which leads me to believe that he did and felt as though he responded in the right and correct way. So standing in that hornet's nest, and knocking it, hitting it, and the hornets is coming around and, and stinging you while you're still standing there. Hmm. That's hmm. everybody has to deal with that. Malcolm Jenkins is going to get criticized for what he said about Drew Brees. Some of these people, Aaron Rodgers, may get criticized about what he said about Drew Brees. Because again, there are more sides than just the side being discussed in terms of having uh, an understanding, some sympathy, some empathy and respect for what's going on with a certain group of people. So to me, once you put yourself out there, you have said, I am open for criticisms. I am open for opinions. Hey, we do this show and we get criticized. I get called some names that are so far from the name that my mama gave me uh, just <laughs> off of the opinions I give on this show. So, no, I'm not I'm not bothered by him catching flack and, and catching criticisms for statements that a lot of people felt were true statements and a true representation of why we have the persisting problems that we have in terms of relations between people. Ah, I have to disagree with both of you guys. Uh, this overwhelming response to Drew Brees and this level of criticism is going to come back to haunt everyone who was out there in an effort to silence Drew Brees and his opinion. I understand and I agree that he was wrong. But to take it to this point, to this extent, is where I say, hold on, enough is enough. And I'm going to tell you why. It's a fundamental principle of life. To get is to give. If you want something, you got to give it. If you want respect, it's a symmetrical equation. You're supposed to give it to get it. And that's what's happening right now in terms of people want to sit there in community censorship and cancel Drew Brees. We're in a place where if Drew Brees says what we want to hear, he's invited to the picnic. He can hold, he can man the, he can man the chef position at the grill. When Drew Brees speaks from his heart, all of a sudden the, the avalanche of criticism and pressure comes on him to make him make an apology that wasn't even genuine and sincere. So we have to think when we speak for ourselves, when we speak from our vantage point, we want that freedom. 
We want that latitude and we want to be heard. It comes with a cost, y'all. It comes with also receiving things you don't like and don't want to hear. We are on a journey for equality as a people. We mm. can't get sidetracked asking Drew Brees, does he know which way to go? If he doesn't know, you continue to roll. You continue to go. If we think about this, I mean, without the emotion, devoid of all of the content that is riling us up, and we start to realize that, wow, we're trying to handcuff Drew Brees just like this country has handcuffed us. And I understand he's not standing on the proper premise, but that's when forgiveness comes into the equation. That's when you have to understand that I need latitude, he needs latitude. We can agree to disagree, but we are on the journey and it can't stop because of Drew Brees. Well, I think the thing that you're alluding to, Marcellus, is we can't be more angry about what Drew said than we are the actual issue itself, right? Because we can't continue to focus and be and, and, and want to suppress Drew, you know, for the next week. And then we forget about why we are even here, because I also see that happening in the media with the people who are looting, right? Because even the looting and the rioting has overshadowed the real issue at hand. Talk and for about a long it, time, Bush. the other three police officers weren't even arrested. They just arrested mm -hmm. them. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. we can't be so angry mm -hmm. at what he said and forget that we still need change. And those same people who are looting and rioting, those people are just as frustrated as we are. And so don't socially uh, block them out from also needing the same change that we need. Because I think that those people who are looting and rioting are maybe some of the people who are most affected by the police brutality. You know, I'm going I'm to double down on you, Marcellus, on, on basically mm. saying that, that Drew Brees is not dictating or to dictate where we're trying to go in, in this, this struggle and on this journey. I, while I'll agree with you, I certainly agree with that sentiment. But to think that he shouldn't be criticized or criticizing him some way somehow diminishes what our clarity is on what the purpose is and what the focus is, anybody can be criticized. And, and to whatever degree that that may be, anybody can have, like, if you put yourself out there, some people that don't even put themselves out there get criticized. So to me, for him to apologize based upon the criticisms that came his way was, was to me, that's more self-driven. Just like the statements that he made that got mm. him in the situation that I have to apologize were self-driven. So when I say I'm not bothered by him being criticized for what he said, everybody's going to have an opinion of what people say that are public figures. Drew Brees messed up. Like, however anybody wants to, to, to kind of shape it, Drew Brees made a misstep. And this misstep is, is, is opened him up for criticisms that, I, listen, I don't, I don't say his character, pretend to say his character is wrong because of this, but did this expose a fundamental thought process? And you said ideology and ideals, it did expose. This, this is exposing what people's true feelings are and whether you agree or you disagree, it's gonna open you up to criticism. But <laughs> how ironic <laughs> we find ourselves in this place again. Colin Kaepernick, 2015, 2016. Let's talk about the cause and how it was hijacked by the flag, by the anthem. Mm -hmm all under the umbrella of patriotism. And it happened before. And here we go again, years later, allowing it to happen again. And before yeah. everyone said it was hijacked, it, it was stolen, it was taken. Sounds like right now, what I'm seeing, you're giving it. You, no one's taking it. You're giving it. You're giving it energy. And, and that's ironic to want to approach something the same way but expect a different outcome. Last time I checked, that was the definition of insanity. Come on, y'all. Mm. If we try mm. to get to the top of this mountain, the people who don't know where to go are not the people you stop and want to help. You go through them. You go to them and you go past them. You go to your goal. As a collective people, we have to keep that in mind. How ironic we're in a situation that 
This country is burning right now because of people's frustrations because they feel that they're not being heard. And then in the midst of that, we're not going to hear someone who differs in our opinion. Come on. This is irony. Yeah, but, but you this can hear ironic. somebody. This is to the but, fullest. But you can hear somebody, Marcellus, and you can have a criticism of it. And that doesn't necessarily have to be as strong a feeling as what you're putting into it. I, I don't I don't look at mm -hmm. it as I don't sure. see where I'm going. I don't look at it as we don't have a clear path because we're addressing Drew Brees. If anything, I think because there is a clear path and there is a clear identity as to what what is taking place, that there would be criticisms. But again, I don't I don't feel as though Drew Brees is being attacked in a way that, say, Colin Kaepernick was attacked when he said or did the things that he did. So I would mm -mm. put those two on the same level. I wouldn't put what we're saying and what we're doing on the same level as what Drew Brees has said and what he's going through. I'm good. He's being criticized for something he said. Case closed. I don't think it goes as deep as saying, well, we saying we want to be heard, but we're saying Drew can't say what he needs to say or wants to say. I don't think it goes that deep. We don't have to go that far down the rabbit hole on this. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm not trying to compare the, the criticism levels between Cap and what you're seeing right now in Drew Brees. So let's re remember, though, this is only day one of Drew Brees. And New Orleans, New Orleans right now is turning on Drew Brees, its son. What? So I just want to be careful that we are not guilty of the same thing we're fighting for, uh, which is no, not I to cancel that. out a voice. Yeah. Not cancel yeah. out a voice because it feels like in this country too long, this has been canceled out as well. Well, coming up, yeah. Drew Brees' teammates came after him as hard as anyone yesterday. Will the quarterback be able to repair those relationships? Find out next. Speak for Yourself is presented by Hyundai. Marcellus Wiley, Reggie Bush, and LeVar Arrington in the house. Let's return to Drew Brees, who probably wishes he had never opened his mouth about protests during the national anthem. His teammates were among the most outraged by his comments. Malcolm Jenkins actually posted and then deleted a video where he told Drew Brees to shut the F up. And others took to Twitter to voice their anger. With Alvin Kamara writing, Oop. And Cam Jordan telling him to be a better ally. Manuel Sanders <laughs> writing, shaking my head. Ignorant. Michael Thomas also tweeted his frustrations yesterday, but softened his stance today, writing, quote, one of my brothers made a public statement yesterday that I disagree with. He apologized, and I accept it, because that's what we are taught to do as Christians. Now back to the movement. Hashtag George Floyd. Reggie, you think Drew will be able to repair these relationships? Uh, I want to start this uh, segment off uh, by speaking directly to Drew, because what I do want Drew to know is um, that I do forgive him. Um, I forgive him for the things that he said, because I know Drew. I know Drew the person, right? You see, just like Marcellus knows Drew. And as we spoke about him before on this show, um, LeBron James doesn't know Drew. Some of these other people that criticize him doesn't know him. All right. But that's also why we were so frustrated is because we know him personally and he's and mm. we forged a relationship, a bond on a football field that can never be broken. I don't care what happens until the day we die. That can never be broken. But with that said, can he repair his relationship with his teammates? I don't know the answer to that question because I can't speak for every other black player in that locker room. I can't speak for the, the black coaches and, and the other coaches in that locker room. I don't know how those guys can feel. I think it can happen, but here's the question. Does he have enough time? Because with the coronavirus and the pandemic, the season is already mm. you know, on the verge of being shortened, right? And we know this is going to be Drew's last year. We know that, right? And so now what we have is a ton of pressure on the New Orleans Saints organization to go out and to try to piece this thing together, um, you know, maybe with a lot of baggage behind it. Yeah, I would like to believe that he can repair the, the relationships. I mean, much like why we're protesting, much, much like why there's so much, mm. uh, you know, Things, so many things going on in, in our country and in the world is really to have an opportunity for some being redemption, you know, for those who have 
have gone with a, a blind eye and a deaf ear to to the plight of uh, certain people's struggles, uh, a redemption and an opportunity to to sit at the table and, and be normal and just feel normal. So to me, the things that we're fighting for to to have that, you know, that ability to be to be accepted and, and have equal rights, I, I think that. That's representative and Drew Brees in a microcosmic way going into the locker room and and redeeming himself there. If if what we are saying is we want justice and we want to be treated fairly and we want to be treated equally, I think that you got to take if there's genuine if there's a genuine sense of repenting and what some of the things that Drew said that were offensive to the people that that were offended by it. Then I think you 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 know you accept the apology and you move on from it. But if it's not genuine, and and mm. and honestly speaking, if you look at it and you know that that he said it, but he's only apologizing because everybody knows now or is is talking about him. I think that that's like a wrinkled piece of paper that you unwrinkle and uncrinkle <laughs> and try to get it straight again. You you can never really get it perfectly straight before it was wrinkled. So. It's a complicated, mm. complex uh, issue, but he should be able to get that that uh, that apology yeah. accepted. Yeah, I think he will be able to get it back. It's going to be tough. You guys pointed out the hurdles, the adversity that Drew is going to face, but you got to mm. understand he he should be allowed the space and the opportunity to repent with his teammates and make sure that they mend those fences. As we saw the tweet already saying that. They're in that mindset, at least, of forgiveness. We'll see if that is team-wide, and we'll see if that is even league-wide. With that said, man, whew, just a couple of days ago, Drew Brees posted hashtag Blackout Tuesday. Like, this is Drew Brees two days ago. On top of all of his works and everything, how quickly things shift. And you get yeah. into this situation right now that once the dust settles... Once the emotions subside, we continue on our path and we don't just continue to look at Drew Brees and his misstep. We're going to realize that the opportunity is still right there. Everything is OK. And Drew Brees, more than likely, I'm hoping, is going to join that force, that momentum and create even more energy for the cause. But we have to remember, greater than Drew Brees and this broken relationship and this perception slash deception is the broken relationship that black people have with America. And that's the ultimate goal. So if anything, the microcosm is this situation uh, where you're talking about, I'm trying to reconcile promises that weren't delivered upon. And that's where we are mm -hmm. right now. And as I always say it, you got to add those with you, not those against you. When you're trying to build yeah. an army, we, we're trying to go up this mountain and we know how steep it is because we haven't even got there yet. We know <laughs> how treacherous it is because mm -hmm. we continue to see the landmines right in front of us. But we have to understand that this is not the end game. This is not the goal. Continue forward. Yeah, and I think now what, what do we do with, you know, what's the next step, right? Because... I do know that Drew Brees' name carries weight in Louisiana. He is one of the guys that can walk directly into the uh, police chief's office and start to help initiate change. Um, he can go directly into some of these courthouses and be a part of change. And I think that's the next step for Drew. I want to see him put his money where his mouth is uh, and also be active, right? Be active in this fight with us uh, because that's the next step, right? We got to have all our brothers and sisters on board for this. And we need our, our, our superstars, both black and white and all sports to be on the same page. And uh, that's what we need next going forward from, from Drew. Exactly. The same thing that got you to become Reggie Bush, LeVar Arrington and me yep. in this position Use it. is you made a choice. You go, you're going to be a victor or you're going to be a victim. And right now, we can't stop. It's impossible to even fathom that there's another outcome other than victory. Let's make sure we stay yeah. steadfast on that pursuit. Coming up, the NFL hasn't had a repeat MVP in over a decade. We'll tell you if Lamar Jackson has a real shot at it. 
Speak for Yourself is presented by Hyundai. Welcome back to Speak for Yourself. Time now for a big story sponsored by KFC's $20 fill-up. drive throughs open or get delivery by Grubhub. Marcellus Wiley here. LeVar Arrington is back. And we're joined now by former Patriots offensive lineman Rich Ornberger. Let's talk Lamar Jackson, MVP, who got together with some of his teammates for a workout at a local park in Florida yesterday. Lamar is gearing up for another monster year, looking for a repeat of last year's MVP season, which won't be easy. Nobody's won back-to-back MVP since Peyton Manning more than a decade ago, and it's only happened five times ever. Peyton did it twice, joined by Brett Favre, Joe Montana, and Jim Brown. Now that's a list. Rich, you like Lamar's chances to repeat as MVP? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, this is the most entertaining man in football right now. Lamar Jackson is must-watch television, but besides that, he made significant, significant exponential statistical improvement from year one to year two, and he was asked to do a lot more. He was asked to prove us that he can keep a defense honest with his arm. He was able to do that. And also, think about this offseason. We're going to have an abbreviated offseason which means that offenses aren't going to be able to gel as much. So the improvisers are going to reign supreme here this next NFL season. I can't wait to see what he pulls out of the hat. Marshall Yonder, the right guard, he's going to be a future Hall of Famer, but he retires. And while the rest of the league is also going to have some issues again with the shortened offseason to get their guys up front to gel, he's really going to thrive in that situation because he can extend play. He can obviously get outside the pocket and create. So I'm high on Lamar Jackson. I think he wins the MVP in 2020. Man, you build a great case right there. But I got to disagree with you. Despite everything you said, which was accurate, you nailed it. The problem is not going to be Lamar Jackson's performance. It's going to be these damn voters with their narratives that they love to insert into performance. You're going to hear somebody who's older, like we saw with Drew Brees a couple years ago. Uh, Aaron Rodgers returning back to his greatest form and at the age of 37, oh my God, or someone who's doing tremendous community service and playing well. And on top of that, you still got to deal with uh, a Callum Murray who's, who's emerging or a Patrick Mahomes who's always going to be in the conversation. I don't trust the voters. I trust Lamar Jackson is finally going to hit the deep outside the numbers route. He's going to continue to evolve. He's going to be great. If this was merit-based, absolutely. But because the conversation has morphed into more of a likability following social media with the button of what you like, I think the voters are going to get this one wrong and they're going to vote Lamar Jackson out of it. Well, I mean, that's a fair point. And I completely agree with you that All MVP voting. And this isn't just in the NFL. This is in the NBA as well. It's a popularity contest. I mean, was Westbrook really the MVP that year? Was he the flavor of the year? You know, I mean, you could look at James Harden and talk the same way. Was he the most valuable player or was he the most popular? Right. LeBron James, to my eyes, many of the years other candidates won was the league's MVP. But back to the NFL, we see these things happen as well. Occasionally, you have an issue where a guy catches fire at the right time. He catches the voters' eyes at the right time, and he can really make a run. It's almost like a political campaign. And here we are talking about electors, right? You know, I, it really is an interesting point you raise. <laughs> but again, greatness wins. And what I'm seeing with Lamar Jackson year over year is budding, building incredible greatness. And I cannot wait to see what he comes up with in 2020 and go a step further talk about offensive coordinator greg roman the work that he's done curtailing an offense to lamar jackson you got the chef in the kitchen with his sous chef for another year together they're going to do some magnificent cooking yeah i agree (laughs) i I agree And, and listen defenses generally close down the gap on what people's success is after they have enough time to to prepare for them. But in a conversation, I was on the phone with actually doing a a Skype call with uh, Ryan Kerrigan was on and was talking about Lamar Jackson as one of the guys that he felt was, it's just insane how amazing um, he's able to do the things that he does on the field. And it made me start thinking to myself, you know, you may be able to draw up the right defensive schemes 
and everything is what it's supposed to be in the practice. But you can't simulate what you're going to see Lamar Jackson do on Sunday. I don't care who you put. You can get your best receiver to run quarterback. You can get, you know, your best running back to do it. But what it is that you're going to see on Sunday against a guy like Lamar Jackson, it's not going to be simulated uh, available. So I still think that he has at least one to two more years before defenses figure him out in a way where you would say maybe he has to ad- adjust or adapt to what the defenses are giving him. But we saw this with Mike Vick, and I think that Lamar Jackson is, if not just as good, maybe more electrifying than Mike Vick was, and they didn't catch up to him for a while. Lamar Jackson or the field? Uh, I'm taking the field. Uh, It's not because of Lamar Jackson. It's because I have more opportunities over there, and there are more storylines, and the pendulum must swing. MVP is a rotating trophy. If you think about it, Kobe Bryant, rest in peace, uh, uh, LeBron James, even Michael Jordan, there were times you're like, who are they giving it to? And it's because they have to find something else of interest. They get bored with the same story like we all do. And now you're talking about a social media age. Don't forget, Peyton Manning did it in 2008. Right now in 2020, when every single throw will be analyzed and criticized, and then it will just live out there in cyberspace for everyone to digest to the point of normalcy. And then to the point of, ah, we expect that, kind of getting bored with that. What's the new trick? And that's when it's going to open up an opportunity for someone else. We saw Russell Wilson have an amazing year last year, but he came into the conversation And then they didn't want him to leave the conversation, even though he was performing himself out the conversation because they hitched their wagon to that narrative. So we have to be very careful about the popularity element that is always a part of this conversation. Coming up, we'll give you our latest approval ratings for Drew Brees. And Uncle Jimmy weighs in on the Saints quarterback. Oh, this should be fun. Next. Oh, no. Oh, no. Welcome back. Speak for yourself from the crib. Joined now by Uncle Jimmy. Let's talk my former teammate, Drew Brees, who stirred it up a whole lot of with this comments that he's had over the last day or so. Uncle Jimmy, what's been your reaction to what my boy Drew Brees said? First of all, let me say that I could care less what's on Drew Brees' mind. You know, I care more or less about what's going on inside his heart. See, because Uncle Jimmy knows for a fact that Drew Brees ain't the problem. See, Drew Brees is just a symptom of a problem. You understand what I'm saying? Mm, And we as mm, a people, mm. now we can't run around here shutting everybody up just because we disagree with what they saying. See, when somebody say something like Drew Brees say, we got to let them keep on talking. We got to let them say something else. You know, it's like, huh? Say what? You don't say And you know what? What we done done, we done created a dialogue. See? Because once you create a dialogue, you're making something happen. Otherwise, if we don't, once you ask the same person this question again, you know what they're going to say? Black lives matter. Black lives matter. And the fact of the matter is you're going to know good and well they lying. Because you know good and well, nobody in (laughs) their right mind wants to go through what they see Drew Brees going through right now. Huh? I'm just saying. Yeah, that's a great point. Great point, man. You're talking about the ground attack versus the the air assault, as they say. Like, you do the ground attack when you want them to stay alive, but you need intel. You don't just drop bombs on it, destroy everything, and say, say, we got the bad guy. And now what? You don't know what the next moves are, the next steps. Keep your eyes on the prize, my people. That's how we got to go about this, Uncle Jimmy. Drop some more knowledge on him. You got any more bombs? Hey, man, it's not that we want too much. It's that we accept too little. Huh? Ooh, yeah. I feel you, Uncle Jimmy. That is it for us. See you tomorrow.